If you've ever stood inside a medieval church, barn, or timber hall and wondered why the beams above your head are still solid after six or seven centuries, you are asking the right question. These buildings survive damp winters, smoke-filled interiors, livestock, leaking roofs, and constant condensation. Modern lumber often fails in a fraction of that time. The difference is not luck, and it is not better wood. It is a treatment method almost never discussed outside specialist archaeology and conservation circles. Medieval builders routinely dipped their timber before construction, and that dip quietly solved the mould problem long before chemistry textbooks existed. The historical record that hints at the timber dip tradition is scattered but consistent. Guild records from England, monastery building accounts in France, and Scandinavian farm manuals all mention soaking beams, posts, or planks for days or weeks before use. The wording varies, but the intent is clear. Timber was deliberately treated in liquid baths prior to construction. Archaeological analysis of preserved beams from medieval bridges, halls, and roof frames shows unusual mineral residues deep within the wood fibres. These residues do not occur naturally and cannot be explained by soil contact alone. What medieval builders were doing was manipulating the biological environment inside the wood. Fresh-cut timber is rich in sugars and starches. These nutrients are exactly what mould and fungi need to establish themselves. By soaking timber in specific solutions, medieval craftsmen leached out those sugars while simultaneously infusing the wood with compounds hostile to microbial growth. The result was wood that aged slowly, resisted rot, and remained structurally sound, even in damp conditions. The most common soaking medium was lime water, created by dissolving slaked lime in water and allowing it to settle. Timber was submerged in this alkaline solution for extended periods, sometimes weeks. The high pH environment killed fungal spores, and altered the internal chemistry of the wood. Lime also reacted with natural tannins in oak, forming compounds that further resisted decay. This is one reason oak beams treated this way can survive for centuries in humid structures. In coastal and riverine regions, salt water played a similar role. Timber soaked in brine or tidal pools absorbed salt crystals deep into its grain. Salt disrupted fungal growth by drawing moisture away from cells, making it extremely difficult for mould to establish itself. Medieval shipbuilders understood this well, but the same logic applied to buildings. Barn beams, floor joists and sill plates benefited enormously from salt exposure before installation. Some regions added organic materials to the soak. Wood ash, urine, and even fermented plant matter appear in historical references. These were not random additions. Wood ash increased alkalinity. Aged urine introduced ammonia compounds that acted as natural biocides. Fermented plant solutions created acidic or alcoholic environments hostile to mould. Builders did not need to understand microbiology to see the results. Wood treated this way lasted longer, plain and simple. The soaking process also changed how wood behaved physically. Treated timber absorbed less moisture from the air once installed. Mould thrives in fluctuating humidity, not stable conditions. By stabilising the wood's internal moisture response, medieval builders reduced condensation inside beams and boards. This was critical in enclosed spaces filled with smoke and breath, such as halls and monasteries.
Applying this knowledge today is entirely possible with modern materials and, well, just a bit of careful handling. For someone restoring a historic structure, building a traditional shelter, or preparing long-lasting outdoor timber, the principles remain valid. The first step is selecting untreated, unfinished wood. Pressure-treated lumber already contains chemicals and honestly should not be soaked using historical methods. The second step is preparing a soaking solution. A lime water bath can be made by adding hydrated lime to water and allowing the mixture to settle using only the clear liquid above the sediment. Timber should be submerged fully and weighed down to prevent floating. Soaking time depends on thickness, but several days is a minimum, with longer periods providing deeper penetration. After soaking, wood must be dried slowly in a ventilated, shaded area. Rapid drying can cause cracking. Medieval builders understood this and stored timber for months before use. This seasoning phase is as important as the soak itself. It locks the treatment into the wood and prevents later distortion. For survivalists or off-grid builders, a simplified version can still be effective. Even soaking wood in salt water for, say, a week before construction significantly improves resistance to mould. Ash-based alkaline washes can be applied repeatedly if full immersion is not possible. The goal is always the same. Remove food sources for fungi and introduce conditions they simply cannot tolerate. What makes the medieval timber dip remarkable is not its complexity, but its efficiency. It used readily available materials, required patience rather than technology, and produced results that, honestly, modern builders still struggle to replicate. It's one of those techniques that disappeared not because it failed, but because industrial speed replaced long-term thinking. This is the kind of historical knowledge that really deserves attention. Not as nostalgia, but as proven engineering. If you value techniques that were tested across centuries rather than product cycles, well, this channel is built for you. Subscribe to stay connected to deep historical practices that still matter and share this episode with anyone who believes old knowledge has nothing left to teach us.